Hey there, how's it going? I wasn't really planning on doing a game jam this weekend that I'm recording this right now, but I saw the mini jam. It is the fishing jam, mini jam 153, and the limitation is no water. It just seemed really fun. So although I wasn't planning to do a game jam this weekend, I don't have all the time in the world to actually work on it. I've actually got a bunch of other stuff to do, but I think I can make something that could be fun in this just because I actually had an idea and I wanted to roll with it. The idea is you're actually a fish out of water who has stolen a fishing rod and you will flop around and then shoot out a hook and use that to pull you across. So it's basically a little platformer puzzle game. I guess we can kind of make it in that regard. I don't know if it'll be fully puzzly or platformy yet. I kind of need to really dig into it still and see how the mechanics feel. But I think it'd be a kind of a fun idea. You can kind of move as you flop around, but you can't like walk around. I think it'll be fun. So I'm going to get going on some initial concepts, getting the thing built in. And yeah, I'll see you at the next interval. Okay, I mean this is a joke, but one of the things that I feel makes me not the best programmer is that I don't copy and paste code enough. That's not a dig. It means that I've been reinventing the wheel far too often. A lot of the time, it makes more sense to take code that works and build off of it. And Construct, the engine I use, has an example slash tutorial project about a hookshot. So instead of writing the whole thing from scratch, I'm just going to yoink this bit of code. Now, I obviously have to tweak it a bit to make it work the way I want. I also had to transfer over the sprites to make the code and animations work, so I need to update those first. And I'm starting out by just adding some temporary dev art to get a feel for what the game might look like. Of course, right now the temporary art is a bit big, but that's an easy change later. For movement, the player can hold left and right, but that will only affect the fish while it's in the air, which makes for a pretty fun flopping effect, but still giving the player control while they're in the air like you would expect from a normal platformer. And of course, we have the fish hook, which even in its terrible dev art looks pretty freaking cool, as long as you ignore the fact that the string is currently coming out of its nose. All right, it is the next day, and I worked on the game for a couple hours last night. I think there's something there that could be fun, so I'm going to keep working on it today. I've got a couple hours. Lady Lark is out visiting a friend right now, so I have a little bit of time to work on the game and then probably a little bit of time tomorrow. So hopefully I can get everything done at least to a reasonable extent and the game can actually be fun. We'll get a decent number of levels in there, hopefully. And the main mechanics are built out, so I think we're OK there. The next step is getting art in, which I started on a little bit last night, and we'll take a look at that in just a second. And then the big thing is going to be building levels, but first we need to get the art in and looking good. While I was trying to figure out what I want the game to look like, I was talking with Lady Lark, and she suggested taking inspiration from Finding Nemo, having the fish flop around in a dentist's office trying to get to the sink, because all drains lead to the ocean. I really wasn't sure how I would make that work, but it was definitely better than anything I had at the time, so a clownfish it is. When getting into the art for a game, I always start with the player character, because it's the main thing you're going to be looking at while playing, so all of the other art should be derived from that, in my opinion. Once I had the base of the fish figured out, it was time for the office, and I did not know how I wanted to do that. I thought about making the player jump around and making platforms out of chairs and tables, kind of like something you would think about in the old Toy Story Super Nintendo game, but I realized that would take too much time in terms of making different varied assets, so I decided to go a little bit more abstract with it and be a little bit more realistic. I started on the terrain tiles, and I quickly realized I was still getting too specific. Typically, with the way I make tiles, they're all one directional. So I end up needing to make a top, bottom, left, and right version of all walls, which becomes a huge pain when you're trying to place them while building out levels. But I still didn't want to do just a solid block, so I tried to make these ones work no matter which way they're rotated, and then we can connect them up to make them place faster. And I'm pretty sure a dentist's office is going to be a bit too difficult and specific to make stuff for, so I'm opting to change it out for more of a generic just office building feel. I did have a momentary thought that the ground tiles look kind of like pipes, and maybe you would enter at the end of the level and then zoom around it, but remembering I don't have a lot of time, I opted for a sink instead at the end of the level just to save my sanity. To not get too complicated in terms of adding extra stuff, I just went with some windows, some wall decoration, and a couple of plants to fill the levels out with. So now the overall base art is done, and I need to start animating the fish. I tried to keep it simple. Most of the frames go into the breathing idle animation. The jump and fall are each one frame with the fish curved to look like it's flopping. And finally a frame with the mouth open to shoot the fish hook. I did later add a death animation, but it's really just the jump animation where I change the eyes and then I rotate it when it's falling off the screen. Then comes the tedious part, adding all of the art to the game and making sure it all works. While I added all the elements in, I also wanted to make the end feel a little bit more satisfying. So when you reach the sink, I made a little animation of the fish diving in and splashing some water out, which I think is really cute. 
Okay, it's Sunday, and full transparency, Lady Lark and I had a party to go to last night, so we went out, and I'm wrecked, and I didn't get to work on the game anymore, and I'm really tired today. I took some caffeine for the first time in like two months. Also, I should say, I am now no longer working on this game alone. I am currently working on it with Miss Olive here, who has joined me as my co-designer, and she, oh, she will be keeping my lap warm, which is a very, very important job for making games. So we've got seven hours and 10 minutes left. And the game is in kind of a okay state mechanically, but there's still a lot to do. So this is the where I'm at right now. We have a character that will flop around. If you hold left and right, it doesn't do anything, but it will flop. And if you press the action button, you extend the fishing line that you have to hook yourself over. And I think with the art, it looks kind of cool. Lady Lark's idea was to make it look like a dentist's office to kind of play off the Finding Nemo thing, which is also why we're using a clownfish, just to make it cute. So we can flop around. We can't go too far. So like this is about as the extent of how far we can flop. So there is some traversal that can be done, but it's not easy without the hook. The end, once we get to the end, we get to the sink. All drains lead to the ocean. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put my head down and hustle. I'm going to put on some loud, aggressive punk rock music and I am going to grind. So I'll see you when we check in. I started my grind with level design, which is an area that I've been realizing lately that I need to put some more dedicated practice into. It's just really slow for me. I don't do layouts quickly and I feel like I'm constantly having to tweak them over and over and over and over again. The way I typically approach it is I build out the levels using one tile so I don't waste time having to constantly go back and make sure the corners are connected and whatnot. My current approach is really just to make the levels a few jumps at a time. I draw out what I think would be interesting and then I try it out to see how it feels. Then I just repeat this process. Because I didn't really set up anything for checkpoints or anything like that, I decided to keep all the levels fairly short and quick. That way players would be able to make it through it and wouldn't be annoyed if they died too close to the end because they had to do a super long level again. And once I have the whole level laid out, then I go back in doing all of the connecting of tiles and adding in decorations and making it look a lot nicer. All right, I've been rocking this for a couple hours now. I have five levels made and I think I'm just gonna stick it with that. And I've decided to turn this over into more of a speedrunning style game by adding in a timer because I think that'll create some sort of replayability with it if people would like to beat their time. So I think I'm going to spend some more time on that rather than adding more levels, which can just kind of get padded out. I don't have a ton of enemies or obstacles. I added it along with the spikes. We now have these moving spikes. I've also added in sound effects, no music yet, but you can hop, jump around. And now we have these spinny obstacles that you need to avoid because if you hit them, you will get hit. Oh, if I can actually hit one. There we go. So got all that in. We have five levels. I think I'm going to set it up for time. And I think that's going to be the best way to go about this. So it's more of a little speed run game. It's five levels. Try to get through quick because you can't move on your own. It's more about the flopping and the efficiency of using the hook. And I think that'll create more fun in the game rather than just padding it out with a ton of levels, which I don't have a ton of time for. So I have about four hours left. If I can add in a couple more, that'd be great. But at least right now I have five levels, which is a good number for a game jam, especially a 72 hour game jam. And now I can just kind of add polish, a timer, and really kind of round it out. That's my ultimate goal. For now, I'm gonna rock on with this and just get it in and hopefully make it a nice packaged up game that's fun to play. I spent the next while adding a timer that starts on the first level and stops when you reach the sink on the last. When having a game with a score or timer where you're trying to beat your previous record, I always want to have the best shown during the game as well, so the player knows the goal they're trying to beat. This all ended up taking way longer than I would have liked it to. I haven't built a timer like this in a while, and I made a few mistakes while setting it up. So of course I had to waste a bunch of time on some bug fixing. Only while writing the script did I find it a little ironic. That I copied some hookshot code at the beginning and totally didn't do that right now because I was panicking. Instead of going and copying and pasting the code from a timer I had built previously, I built this one from scratch for some reason. So once I finished that up, I really just had time to get the menus in and then do some testing on the exported game. Always remember to test your games before submitting to a jam. It's super unfortunate when someone enters a jam and their game works fine in the editor, but then doesn't after the export. It was an easy fix, but it's simple things like these that can cause massive problems at the end of a jam if you don't check, and then you can't upload a fix. 
All right, it's been about five hours of grinding. I have just uh, posted the game publicly. For some reason, it just having problems uploading my cover image. I'm assuming people are trying to finish up jams. That's what usually ends up happening. We currently have 12 minutes left and I even forgot to join the jam. So let's go ahead and join the jam and let's submit our project. Uh, let's go ahead. Our game is called Fish Hook. And let me fill this out. All right, it is all filled out. I am the only person on the team. Construct 3, Photoshop, and A-Sprite were pretty much all I used for this. I can't think of anything else other than my audio stuff, which are just things that I've purchased through Humble Bundle and whatnot in the past. How did I incorporate the theme? You play as a fish out of water. Because of that, you cannot swim and must flop and hook your way through the no water environments. So the limitation is no water. Hopefully that counts. Uh, how many cookies did I eat during the development cycle? Lady Lark just got a bunch of Girl Scout cookies last night while I was working on it, so I've had about eight. But that is the jam. Looks like we are good. We'll take a look at the game here in just a second, but let's go ahead and submit. Go. Your project has been submitted. Hell yeah. All right, we have submitted. We are good. And now... I'm going to finish filling out the itch page because right now it's ugly. I'm going to get that looking kind of all right. And then I'm going to go take a break and I will come back to this video later. <laughs> okay, well, pass me get some rest after spending another couple hours fighting with itch having issues uploading images. Let's take a look at the game. Fishhook is a short speedrunning game where you can't run. You play as a fish that has swallowed a fishing pole and needs to escape the office building you found yourself in. You must flop and hook your way through five levels as fast as you can, avoiding the spikes and hazards that are all too common in today's office environments. Once you reach the final sink, your timer stops and you find out if you beat your best time or not. This is my current best. You think you can beat it? Overall, I'm really pleased with this game. It was a silly idea that came to me out of nowhere and I had a lot of fun making it, even if I was hungover for a good bit of it. There's a link in the description to play the game right now if you'd like. Leave your best time in the comments. Also, it's really cool that people seem to really like the game as well. I got a lot of amazing comments as well as taking overall third in the jam while getting second in use of limitation, fourth in enjoyment, fourth in concept, and 19th in presentation, which isn't my best one, but hey, that's still pretty good out of 233 entries. So I gotta say, I'm pleased and I'm glad people liked it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We're inside of 100,000 subscribers, which is a huge milestone, and it's absolutely crazy to think about. Also, if you want to see the game making process live, come hang out over at twitch.tv slash vimlark. I stream several days a week, and it's always a great time. I also need to give a big thank you to my Patreon supporters, especially my video producer tier patrons and above, like C the Mess, iNight Gaming, Matsi, Nazar Salim, Pixelator Gadzi, and Warren Steven Rose. You're all awesome, and I can't thank you enough for the continued support. And one final thank you to you for watching, especially if you've made it this far in the video. You rock. I'll talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.